Right, well, um, I have about 50 minutes, which is a bit ridiculous for me. Uh, I like to speak for about three hours and get a little bit of dialogue going, but I've been thinking about this time for quite a while. I mean, when Rebecca contacted me about this, I'm thinking, why would I want to go to a place of Biola where you're all bright people, you've got brains, you know how to think. You've got brains, I hope, somewhere in there. <clears throat> and you know how to think. And I'm amazed there's so many young people in it. And I just think, Lord, well, how many in this room? I don't know. But so I really don't want to just muck around. Is that all right? I've got a short time. So I'm going to go for it. So I'm going to throw some things past your little screen. Colossians 2.10 says that you've got the fullness of the Spirit in you. So you really don't need to listen to me because you've got the fullness of the Spirit of God in you. You may have all of the Holy Spirit in you, but sure, the Holy Spirit doesn't have all of you. And that's what I want to talk about today. I have a lot of stinking passion. And I've lived life for a few years. I'm 55 years old today. Oh, not today. 55 years old. But my spirit and my soul never grow old. You know that, don't you? Spirit and soul never grows old. I find I get with young people and you're stinking boring sometimes. I think, come on, get a life, you know? So <clears throat> here's a few quick thoughts for you. I'm gonna to talk to you today about Jesus as Lord. And as, as Melissa said, it's ridiculous to say, you know, you're gonna make Jesus Lord. He already is. Philippians 2 tells us that. Every knee shall bow, every tongue get clear that Jesus Christ. So we're not making him Lord, but... If you're ever gonna mature and grow as a Christian, you must recognize that truth. And you'll only recognize the truth that you can say, Jesus is Lord this week, Jesus is Lord. That won't get you anywhere, nowhere. You can say that Matthew 7, 20, they were saying, Jesus is Lord, didn't I do this, didn't I do all that? You didn't know me, you don't know me. And I tell you, you can do all these things, but I tell you, we're not making him Lord, he already is, but you can only have revelation of that fact daily by what? 1 Corinthians 12, verse three says, by the Holy Spirit. So I wanna talk about some really cool stuff, if you're ready. I am passionate. That is my wife, Prue. That's my wife. Isn't she amazing? <clears throat> now, I've got a lot of passion. The word passion, parcia, in the Latin means what? Suffering. Passion of Christ, the suffering of Christ. I always wonder, what are you willing to suffer for? I actually have a great hope for your generation. I, just, I think you're the most awesome generation out. But there's two words that are coming as I walk around this, this, this campus saying, Lord, and this morning, I, just as they, they were praying, playing that song, the band, I just felt all well, the holiness of God in this place. And you know, there are two words, responsibility and commitment. And I'm committed to this woman 30 years ago nearly. I stood up in front of witnesses and confessed with my mouth and believed in my heart and said yes, and I got married to this, put the beautiful woman up, please. <laughs> Get her up there. And this woman, <clears throat> and by making a commitment, a vow that has really protected us, I want you to make some commitments today, actually, because you've only got six hours after I've given this message. The first six hours after a baby is born is the most critical time. After hearing a message for six hours later, if you do nothing with it, it's gone. So at the end of this message, you can do something. <clears throat> I got married and then I had five sons. <clears throat> so I got five sons. Now, you yelled out when the Jonas Brothers got on. What about for me? Do you go like that for me? Come on. <clears throat> my oldest son is, is, is 28 and my youngest son, Joel, is 17. So I know how to handle the young lads. And I'm living in one of the apartments here with about five or six of us in there. And it's really cool living on the campus. I like to mix it where it's all happening. And so I have a lot of passion. I could talk for hours about my family, but you would get bored because you don't know them. But I'm gonna talk about another passion. Get this thing going, bro. <laughs> don't worry about me. <clears throat> I'm gonna keep moving, just keep this on. Don't worry about me. I'm gonna talk about another passion and his name is Jesus Christ. I've even got the T-shirt on so you don't forget Jesus. He's not a little stepping stone. I'm just gonna go and do this at Biola and then what? Jesus is it. I'll tell you, Jesus is it. And I would like to see and that he is so stinking famous today because where I go around in very dark places and I tell you they're looking for people 
who got some passion, something willing to die for. So I'm gonna talk about this guy called Jesus. You know, Lordship of Christ, all it is is a heart, is knowing Jesus. I've been married for nearly 30 years. I still don't know my wife fully yet, for goodness sake. Who can understand a woman fully? <laughs> it takes a little while. They're wonderful beings, aren't they men? Just relax. <laughs> but I'll tell you, knowing God does take, just like a relationship with my wife, it takes walking and talking. You can sit all the time in class, but I tell you, you've got to walk and talk with Jesus at the end of this message. Get off off your backside and walk and talk with him. That's how you get to know him. And having a heart like his, if you've got a heart like his, you will laugh ridiculously about life. Let's all laugh, come on. <laughs> come on. Or you will cry. You will cry for the lost. When I joined this mission, 20, nearly 24 years ago, it wasn't to get taught. It wasn't to get healed. It wasn't to get discipled. It was because of the lost. And I've still got that in my heart. You know, and I just think of the season we're in right now. You know, if you're gonna actually do anything with your life, you know, we're the product of the decisions we make, not just the desires of our heart. You desire all you like. I desire to get out of bed at five o'clock and pray. You won't. Desire doesn't lead to action. You must make a decision. You make a decision. I made a decision when I was 19 years of age and I have never looked back. Now, I'm not gonna rave about me, I'm raving about him. And I made a decision when I was 26 to get married. God ordains days for us, he has ordained this time for you. And you're all trapped in this place to get your stinking little credit, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but I hope there's something greater, because I've been trapped in meetings like this, and God the Holy Spirit has spoken sovereignly. And if there's anything you need to hear, it's not from me, but you must have revelation in this season. That will give you authority, not information, revelation from God himself. So once you understand who is your master, you understand who's the Lord, then you're ready to understand who you are in your mission in life. And when you're so busy doing the mission, you'll say, God, I need some help. And he'll say, here's your helpmate, this woman for you, amen? amen? Most men are going out with a girl, but they haven't got a clue where they're going. I don't know why they're going out with a girl, they haven't got a clue where they're going. Most men are so, they haven't got anything to do. You should be so stinking busy, 20 to 25 year old men, so stinking busy, teenage guys and women, so busy. And then when it's time, don't worry, you'll have your help, mate. But it's master first, then mission, and then mate. When I was, quickly, gotta go quick here, when I was 19, cross, <sighs> gotta get the cross. This is Patrick, he's the cross. <clears throat> Patrick, cross, okay. <clears throat> So here am I, I was before 19 years of age. It's, I was, I was, look, it was interesting hearing from uh, JFK, is it from about being from a Catholic background. I'm from a Catholic background too, cool, isn't that awesome? Come on. <clears throat> and so I knew about God. Look, I'll tell you, many, many people have a revelation of a historical Jesus. They know Jesus. They know historically about him. I knew about Jesus. But I went to a little place, I was like, look, I'll tell you, at 17, 18, those critical ages, I hate teenage years, you poor things. <laughs> teenage years are difficult because your brains are still wacky and <clears throat> whatever. And so 25 is when they finally settled. But anyway, that's a whole nother story. But, and so I was 17, 18, I left, I left school and suddenly I've got a job, some money and a car. So I was much more independent and New Zealanders were very independent, stuff you. We're gonna do what we wanna do. And so at 17 or 18, I had a couple of years trying to find myself. And I've been a lot of people trying to find themselves, but my younger brother had all these Christian friends around and they were so cool. You know, really cool Christians, they weren't the boring religious ones. They were so in love with Jesus. And I tried to get a little thing to annoy them. I'm gonna see if they're really Christian, I'm gonna. There's another boy. And I, you know, I get a little, I tried to push some buttons. And if I could find a button to push and just see if these Christians really were gonna jump at me, you know what they did? They just loved me. Now, I'll tell you, I stand here before you as a 55-year-old man because I met the right kind of people when I was a teenager. 
Be determined to be the right kind of student. Smile a bit occasionally. Some Christians are boring to live with. Smile, <laughs> live life, you are. And so at the age of 19, I was on drugs, big time. You know, I remember the first time, the, remember that? Uh-uh, stop that. <laughs> remember that? And other stuff in those days, back in those days. It's just crazy, stupid stuff, alcohol. Now sex, well, I was a bit nervous. Well, you can fantasize, and as, as JFK said, I mean, I speak on DTSs and with young people all the time, and I'll tell you, 98.9% .9 of the guys struggle with pornography and masturbation. This is the Christians. Everybody's struggling. And if that's in this class, you're probably struggling too. But you know what? I'm not going to get down on you, because I'm just talking about Jesus tonight, today, right? But it's a stinking struggle. And I remember at that time, so sex I was a bit nervous of, because I came from a what background? Catholic, thank you, Jesus, the fear of the Lord or something, praise God. <laughs> but so then at the age of 19, I was so desperate, and I climbed a hill and I said these words, I want to know this guy through the love of this. And I said, Jesus, if you're real, if you're real, I want to know you. You gotta carry me. I want to know you. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> I don't know, is that it? You got it? Is that it? You got it going? Get your arms up. So yeah, I came to the cross of Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? Is that a miracle? Do you know what? It is so easy to come to Jesus. You may know a historical one over here. Now I know the personal one, and he loves me. Oh, he loves me. <laughs> He's gonna give me everything I need, and it's all about me. <laughs> to the cross, back to the cross, me. <clears throat> you see, getting saved is not a difficult thing because it's all about Jesus. But I'll tell you what, if you're gonna be a kingdom believer, there's no way you're gonna change the world just by a personal relationship with Jesus. You're gonna to have to meet the living Jesus and meet his glory. And that's what I'm praying for you guys as you walk, because you know a lot. You're the most incredible generation. But I tell you what, when you wanna step out here, at the age of 19, something happened in my life that transformed me. Matthew, it talks about the, stay there, the rich young ruler, Matthew 10, 17. You know the rich young ruler? You know that story? Stay there. The rich young ruler, and he was saying, good teacher, what must I do to have eternal life? I've got a lot of people asking me, what do I have to do? What do I do? What do I do to get saved? And all they wanna do is add another law, add something else to do. What Jesus says, he said, well, because he asked him, have you done all these things? Oh yeah, I've been to Biola College and, and I, I, know, I pray and I do all these things, I do all these things, I do all these things. What else do I need to do? Jesus said, go and sell everything. Jesus is not into improving the old life and adding another law for you to do to make it nice. He's here to transform us from the inside stinking out. I'll tell you, this is different. And if you are gonna step off here at the age of 19, getting saved is easy. Being a kingdom dweller, I'll tell you, you know, that's, what is the, what's the movie? Indiana Jones, <laughs> you know? You've got to step off and be a kingdom dweller. And I'll tell you, you will never do that unless you've met his glory. I'm going to talk about the glory of God in one of the seminars, but you've got to meet his glory. But I want to meet it right here. Because you know what? I sense the holiness of God in this place. His presence in this place. Thank you, brother. You did well. <clears throat> I'm just getting started here. Oh, God. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses... We heard this this morning, let us throw off everything that hinders. You know, I don't focus on the thing that hinders. Throw off every sin. But you know what I focus on? I wanna run a good race. I'm weak. I've been married 30 years. That's, my wife's helped me to realize those things. Thank you, Jesus. And the good things, don't worry. But I'll tell you what, how do we run a good race? What, how will we persevere? What do I have to do? Fix your eyes on Jesus. I am so tired of Christians fixing their eyes on their stinking weaknesses and themselves and all their sin. 
Matthew 20, 29, I've got to hurry. Got to, you all right? I've got to keep going. Matthew 20, 29 says, there were two blind men sitting on the side of the road. See, if you've come to this conference and think, oh, well, it's another conference. You know, I was in a place recently and they asked me, well, why does the Holy Spirit move when you come? And I said, well, you know what? I just expect him to. I just expect it. And so these two guys are sitting by the road and Jesus walks past them and they yell out, Jesus, son of God, have mercy on us. Matthew, what is it? Somebody yell it out, what is it, 20? That's it, 20, thank you. Matthew 20, 29. So as Jesus was walking past, a large crowd followed him. It's very easy to be in a large crowd today. You're a big crowd here. Don't just be a crowd in the crowd. I've always been determined. You know, there's a woman in a crowd with bleeding. Remember that woman? What'd she do? She reached through. I'll tell you what, if you're waiting for the Holy Spirit and God to do some amazing things in your life, if you're gonna be a kingdom dweller like the rich young ruler who just wanted another law, it's not by laws, it's by day by day by day choosing right. And it's stinking hard work. If you wanna learn a musical instrument, you're gonna have to practice. If you wanna learn another language, you're gonna have to practice. You know the kingdom is, you're gonna have to start walking day by day choices making right choices so when the day comes when you hopefully do make the right one, you've practiced. Are you hearing me? Particularly if a sweet little girl or guy walks past your little screen and you wanna do something stupid, which I'm a little tired of, but I understand why. And so <clears throat> these two dudes sitting by the road, they yelled out, Jesus, son of David, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them, told them to be quiet. That's so typical. As soon as you wanna get up and do something, somebody tells you to shut up, usually the person right next to you. Stop showing off, don't be like that. Be quiet, just be like part of the crowd. But they yelled all the more and Jesus stopped and he called to them. When was the last time Jesus stopped in front of you and just stood there? Because you've yelled out something in desperation as JFK said, a hunger. And so they called out and then Jesus comes along and says, well, what do you want me to do for you? Isn't that a great question? That's what he's asking of you today. What do you want me to do? A lot of people think that, you know, he's the healer, I'm blind, do I have to ask? Yes, you do. What do you want? What are you really wanting from this time? You know what, I've been preparing for this for quite a few months. So I have high expectation God move. Because I'll tell you, if there's anything we need right now, it's in this season that people actually understand who Jesus truly is, not just a photocopy of a copy of a copy of a copy. I'm tired of people repeating stuff they've heard, but they don't know the real Jesus. Are you hearing me? A photocopy is great, but then after a while it just fades. People come to me, Mark, have you got a word for me? You got a word? I say, no, 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 I don't wanna give you a word. I wanna take you to the word. His name is Jesus Christ. I don't wanna give you a word. Get your own. <laughs> Get it yourself. And so a passion for Jesus. I tell you, I got a passion for my wife. That's cool. I got a passion for my sons. Every passion you have will eventually enslave you. Anything you love, Anything you hold on to, that will dictate what you are and who you, where you go. But I'll tell you what, a passion for Jesus Christ will never, it'll always set you free. That's why I could just keep going absolutely crazy and crazy. And everybody thinks, Mark, you're going crazy. I'm getting crazier as I'm getting older because I'm so desperately in love with this guy called Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, this is eternal life that we know you. Now in this time, there's something I believe God wants you to have revelation of who he is, the knowledge of him. In Matthew 22, it talks about love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and strength. Look, if you have intimacy, I've got intimacy with my wife, amen? Don't picture it. <laughs> but when we have intimacy together, which is a cool dude thing to do, we're worshiping and wonder at one another and out of our love for each other, we've actually helped to create others. Isn't that cool? When you know of intimacy with God, you know what worship is? You know what all worship is? It's an overflow of his love. And when you worship with everything, everything within you, like David did, it'll overflow. You know what it does? It touches other people, and that's called evangelism. And then that goes right from there into justice. I wanna just tell you, if you want this community to really be the most amazing community, this is what you need. Worshiping community, caring community, and a missional community. If you've got those three things in balance, tension, you'll have a wonderful place here. All right, I gotta keep going. Thank you, Jesus. Daniel 11:32 32 says, 
The people who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. I'm looking for people who are getting a good story. You know what a story is? You know a good story? You love stories? Well, let me tell you this story. In Acts 17, it says, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth. He does not live in temples built by hands. He's not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. And listen to this. From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. You know what? I'm meant to be here this week. Isn't that cool? And so are you. See, God has ordained something, the exact time. I've been to many nations. I was in Ireland last year, first time in Ireland. And my my background, my my parents' side, way back generationally, is Irish. As soon as I got to Ireland, I just got down on my knees and I got down on the ground and I sniffed the ground. You know, I want to get the earth right inside because my ancient wells from generation to generation comes out of that nation. And I want God to speak to me. You know what? And he did. It was a powerful time. But he ordained, so if I'm here, we're going to have some fun. Okay. <clears throat> God did this, brought you here, so perhaps you'll reach out and find him, though he's not far from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. Let me tell you, this couldn't be a better time for a missions conference. I was thinking about the scripture. I haven't got it there, but it's in, it's in uh, Matthew 9, 36 to 38. When he saw the crowds, Jesus... He had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. I'll tell you what, this season we're in. I deal with Christians who are battered enough, but I wonder what the non-Christians are doing. Do you wonder that? Do you wonder what it's like out there? Harassed, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. I'm not gonna press about being a missionary If you love Jesus, you're gonna have to do something with that. Are you hearing me? That passion has to go. Okay, 2011. (laughs) Keep it going, bro, I don't wanna see me. Great story. Look, if you wanna get a good story, I told my sons, don't rely on my faith and my revelation, get your own. You've gotta have your own stories, young people, because that's the problem in Judges when the whole generation, they went off and followed false gods because they heard the stories of Joshua, they never lived them themselves. You gotta get your own. And so, what makes a good story? Highs and lows, isn't that cool? Anyone like a good movie? You know, you got a good movie, it's always got, you know, it's got a, a beautiful girl, a guy, it's always have a guy there, guy and girl, that always gets interest going, you know. And then there's an evil person trying to take the woman or something, you know, a baddie. And then we all, we all know that he's a baddie, but nobody else knows. But we know he's a baddie, she should not be with him, she should be with him. And we know all this, and there's what's happening, and then something's going, everything's going wrong, and then finally at the end, the baddie is destroyed, and the goodies win. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that makes a good story. So I had a look at what 2011 meant. I'm a numbers man. The first 20 numbers in the Bible, tradition, have different meanings. Last year was our 50th year of YWAM as a mission. Most missions after 50 years are dead, they're dying because they get so organized and structured. And the Holy Spirit's been saying, you gotta drop some of that. Don't get into organizational structures. Remain as a movement, not an institution. Don't inst- be a movement, apostolic. And so God was moving last year. In the beginning of this year, it was a challenging year. And I began this year thinking, God, what's this year gonna be about? And this is what he said. I had a look at numbers 11, uh, I look at the number 11. And just, you know, just out of, uh, out of a little bit of inquiry, it means this, incompleteness. It means disorganization, disintegration, lawlessness, disorder. It would have taken them about 11 days to get across the wilderness, it took them 40 years, but 11, 12 is foundational in scripture. So 11 is sort of not there yet. And I felt, man, this year is gonna be quite chaotic, quite messy and shaking. I even thought of earthquakes. And of course, we've just had the earthquake in Japan and we had the earthquake in Christchurch, New Zealand, which has absolutely really rocked the nation. Absolutely rocked the nation. I mean, we only had 180 or 200 dead compared to the thousands in Japan, but I'll tell you, it's really rocked us. And there's been some shaking, and obviously in the Middle East, you know, in North Africa, there's turmoil going on, and I'm thinking, well, Lord, you know what? In Genesis, it says this, now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. 
So sensing the spirit of God over darkness. And then it says an amazing thing. And God said. You know what I think? Just like those, those two guys sitting in a crowd. You can be part of the crowd. But you know what? I think this is a season to start to speak out. Be creative. There's going to be mess. And I feel it is going to be a messy year. But you know what i got in me? Hope. So much stinking hope you would not believe it. And my hope is for you sort of guys. I think... You know, I've got here a little quote, you know, we go on a journey, Bilbo Baggins. Remember Bilbo? Bilbo? <clears throat> he says to Frodo, it's a dangerous business, Frodo, going out of your door, you step onto the road, and if you don't keep your feet, there's no knowing where you might be swept off to. There's a story to be got this year, and there's a journey to be taken. And I was thinking about, I've just started reading 1 Samuel, and I was thinking, man, who did God speak to? In 1 Samuel, who was he speaking to? Not Eli, the priest, but to Hannah, the marginalized woman who was barren, and to, to Samuel, her son. And I thought, wow, I think God's going to speak through the young people and through the marginalized people. God's going to speak. Are you hearing me? So I don't want to be an old fart like Eli who missed it. So I keep, really want to stay close in this time, but I'm listening to the young people. They're all out on the streets in Tunisia and Egypt, but the young people are going for it. So I'm for them to bring change. And God's speaking through young people like you guys. And so I just want to give you a little quick little history lesson. Are you all right still? I'm going like a mile. You okay? Stay with me. Don't you dare leave. You walk into the future backwards. That's a Maori proverb from New Zealand, which means if you want to know what the future looks like, look what happened in the past. And right now, I was really frustrated last year because I'm dealing with mainly Christian young people, and it's the same thing week after week. Now, don't, I'm not judging people, but I'm just saying, so many women have been raped. This is just, oh, and abuse. Pornography is epidemic. It's about every student, and really struggling. And if you're struggling with that, I'll tell you, if you're young now, you stop that thing and get prayer now, because I'll tell you, it is so addictive. It's worse than heroin. What it does to the mind, it's worse than heroin. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff, and I'm thinking, God, why do the young people have such a struggle? And so I was looking at a little bit of history. So here's some history. You're all into history? Okay, I'll do it real quick. The first three, here's Jesus. He's just gone. Boop. Here they are. What was it? The church. The church was out in the margins. The first three centuries, the church was out there being persecuted. Amen? Then along comes who? In the fourth century, this guy called Constantine, or Constantine, and he gathered everything together, the church and everything, and it all became one and out there. And suddenly the church and all the culture, it's out there in the mainstream. Then along in the 16th century comes another guy. It's always one individual. Who is it? What's his name? Good old Catholic monk called Martin Luther, and everything was unraveled. And so things began to disintegrate and things that we thought were all nicely together had been moving, marginalized, the church and the state, and now the church is way, way back out in the margins. Isn't that cool? Isn't that amazing? Some people say that we are probably at the time exactly like it was just after Jesus left and things are scattered. So I thought that's why young people are struggling so much because you're so much living in now no longer a Christian society, right? Right? You're out there and you're out there like little lambs to wolves. That's why I get really crazy in this place. So I wanna just give you a little thought, just really quickly, I know we're gonna run out of time, but some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. I'll tell you what, this is the time not to trust in your chariot or your stinking horse, or some institution, but you've got to learn how to trust in God, because He is firm, and He's solid. There's too many people building on sand. Zechariah, we know, not by might but, or by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. <clears throat> Can't do this, no. That would be good, but no. His sheep follow Him because they... What? What? You don't believe me. Because you go around, I mean, it's good to get wisdom, but I'll tell you what, a lot of people say, I don't, know, I don't know if God speaks. If you're a sheep, you know his voice. You don't need experts. It's good to have wisdom of counsel and all that, but I'll tell you what, young people, if you're a sheep, you'll know his voice. Are you hearing me? 
You don't need to be a stinking expert to know his voice. He speaks. He's been speaking as I walk around this place, just as he does to you. And it says that the word of God is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you may obey it. I find with your generation, you're very quick to repent. I I forgive, I forgive you, I bless you. I forgive you, I bless you. I repent, I forgive. Very slow to obey. Very slow to see change of behavior. And so as we go through, oh Lord, okay. No, I won't do this. It's all good, but thank you, Jesus. You can get the notes if you want them. Um, I just wanna do this little, a scripture about who Jesus is, and then I'm gonna do a little picture about just what what, uh, JFK was talking about this morning. You know, Jesus, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So he tabernacled himself on this thing called the earth. The heavens have no beginning or ending, but the earth. And in every temple, there was Dagon's temple, the different temples, there was always an image put inside that temple. So what's the image that was put on the tabernacled earth that God put of himself? What's the image? that he put on the earth? What's the image? It's us. We're the image. We are image bearers of Jesus himself. And so I look at this, I think of Genesis one and two. I was saying to the guys this morning in the seminar, we've been created for relationship with God, intimacy with him, image bearers of him, and then to go and do something with that, to to rule. God said, let us make man in his image and likeness. Let them rule. So he created man and woman. Isn't it amazing what he created with man and woman? Isn't it incredible? Isn't it amazing? I can't really teach on this, but I'll give you a little picture. Should I talk, can I talk about sex here? Is that all right? Oh, okay. In marriage, you see, God made a man. You know, don't picture a man, but a man has certain bits to him that a woman doesn't. But if you look at a man and look at a woman and you go, oh, they actually fit. They fit together. Isn't that awesome? And as they come together as one, particularly in the sexual act, do you know what that is? You remember the story when, you know, the the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are so uniquely connected together as one. Remember that picture when it says, um, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. Remember that scripture? That's what Jesus did. He left the Father, left heaven, came and left, and he gave himself to the church. Every time my wife and I have sexual relationships together, you know what we're doing? Physically, actually, physically working out Father, Son, and Holy Spirit relationship. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that incredible? It is an most incredible thing. Father, Son, Holy Spirit united. We've been created for intimacy with him. And when Jesus left the father to give himself to the bride, a man leaves his family and gives himself to the wife. I'll tell you, the Bible begins with marriage and ends with a marriage feast, and it's all about oneness and unity. Isn't that cool? So I got a really rush, but look, look, look at this. Here's the Old Testament believer. Okay, can I have a Moses, please? <clears throat> Moses, come forward. Can I have father? Where's father? Give me father. Come on, a man, you'll do, father. Son, you'll do, you're good. Holy Spirit, Jessica, come on, Holy Spirit. I always think Holy Spirit's got feminine, you know, counselor and all that sort of stuff, you know. Okay, okay, so here we have the Old Testament. I'm just gonna picture, visualize this for you. In the Old Testament, Exodus 33, Moses with deadness in his spirit hungered after the presence of God. And where did he have to go? He'd have to go to, where's father, son, Holy Spirit, come on, you can get real close there. And, oh, come on, get close in there, like that, yeah, okay. 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 Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What's that called? That's the tent of meeting. That's the tent of meeting. It's this thing. Picture, picture. It's this thing. The tent of meeting with that fire above, that cloud that they were to follow. And Moses would come to the tent of meeting and bow down, and bow down and worship to get close to the presence of God. (laughs) Moses also, we know, found the burning bush. Remember they talked about the burning bush? 
And the old says, when he saw that the Lord, he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush. Moses, Moses, God hadn't spoken for a long time. First words were personal, Moses. And so he called out to Mo Moses, the burning bush. Okay, got that picture? All right, and then we go to the New Testament. Ephesians 1.13 says we've been included in Christ when we've heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 2, it says, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, but because of his great love for us, God made us alive with Christ. It is by grace you've been saved. In the New Testament, when Patrick comes to the temple, what is the whole, no, he's down here on his ground. Get back on the ground. You're gonna stay there. <laughs> Holy Spirit comes to save it, to call us, doesn't he? Holy Spirit comes, and the Holy Spirit always leads us to the, to, to Jesus. Lead him to Jesus. Come on, lead him to Jesus. Take up, stand up, stand up. Come on, you're a son. And then Jesus always leads us to the Father. So get in the middle, Patrick. <laughs> right in the middle, and you get all around him. And so now, in the New Testament, <laughs> in the New Testament, you know what? You are the burning bush. You are the tent of meeting. Are you hearing me? You carry the very presence of God within you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I have no fear in this season. It's gonna be a dark season, but you carry the very presence of the Spirit of God within you. You're the burning bush, isn't that cool? Wherever you go, wherever you go. And so the turning point, of course, in Scripture was John 7. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. After that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. That's an incredible turning point in Scripture. New Testament, believe we don't have to go to a tent of meeting. You are. You're the burning bush. Isn't that cool? Isn't that amazing? All right, last little bit. I better hurry or I'll be in big trouble. Can't do that. No, nah. I have to do this. And then I'm gonna finish with one of my son's songs. Of what value is an idol? Since a man has carved it, or an image that teaches lies, this is the, this is the pain in my heart, because I hear this all the time. Whatever you hold on to, whatever you love, that's what you're gonna become like. Whatever passion you run after, that's what you're gonna be like. I'll tell you, a passion for Jesus will never enslave you, but it'll set you free. So what value is an idol since a man has carved it? Or an image that teaches lies, I see a lot of deception. And I've seen lots of beautiful people like you as I look around and say, man, look at you guys. I go to places where people would die to live in America. They all line up at immigration places throughout the world to get to your nation. I, see, I know young people who would absolutely be so amazed if they could go to a college like this of Biola and be taught in America. They would die for this. And I tell you, please see the seriousness of, this, of the situation you're in in this world right now. Are you hearing me? Well, no, you're hearing me, but are you truly hearing? Of what value is an idol since a man has carved it or an image that teaches lies? For he who makes it trusts in his own creation. He makes idols that cannot speak. Woe to him who says to the wood, where's some wood? Come to life. Or to lifeless stone or an iPod, EPod, jackpod, laptop. I don't care what it is. iPhone, lifeless stone. Wake up. Can it give guidance? It is covered with gold and silver. It looks really good, but there is no breath in it. And I see people following after really a lot of stuff and there's no breath in it. And I'll tell you, in this season that we're in, I'll tell you right now, you are gonna need the presence and power of God. We know that when we got saved, remember when you got saved? Remember that when you got saved? i never forget that day, 19. I've never forgotten, like Jacob with his hip out of joint, I've been out of joint ever since. Not this joint, out of joint. 
And you know what? I've never looked back because I know what the world is, but I'm not, I'm not against the world. I don't want to be away from the world. That was my generation. The postmodern b- baby, sorry, the baby boomers all want to get out of the world and have our little communities. You're the postmodern youth who want to be right in the center of the action, right? But I tell you what, you've got to recognize something within you. When you got saved, John 1.12, you've got power to become a child of God, but you need the Acts 181 power, the dunamis power, the Spirit of God upon you to empower you in this time. And that power was so that they could be great witnesses. You can't witness something you haven't witnessed. You can't lead people where you haven't led, you haven't gone. I hope you're gonna go a little deeper this week, not just sit in this nice little lecture, because it's so safe in a crowd, isn't it? Ha <laughs> ha! This is a cool scripture, nearly done. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. And for there, and therefore all died. And he died for all that what? That those who live should no longer live for them stinking selves. The day I got saved, ah! I realized there were other people on this planet. And I fell in love with people. Something happened. I love people. You want to hang out with me? I'll hang out with you. I don't care what age you are, old, young. I'm as young and ridiculous. But I'll tell you what. This day and age, and I feel sorry for you because we've come through that greedy time, but now the bubbles burst in the year 2000 and because of the terrorism and because of 2008, the recession. So you've never had this before. So we're in dark times, but what a time of hope. Because you know what? God is real. Isn't that amazing? He lives. (laughs) All right. I'm looking for... Disciples, Jesus came to make, go back, go make him. <laughs> Jesus came to make disciples, not just believers. And we run discipleship training school, school for training disciples. And a disciple, you know what a disciple that says in the scriptures in John and then? He obeys. He knows how to love. And you know what? He's fruitful. I'm looking for fruitful people. As long as you're a tree that's rooted real, you've got to watch where your roots are. So when you're really rooted as a good tree, some people are not, you know, like, you know, what's the name? Uh, Lord of the Rings. You know, the trees move. Remember that? Some trees, you know, there are a lot of people trying to get, you know, they go and they move around, they get other people's fruit. <coughs> and they try and get fruit from others. You know what? All you've got to do John 15 has been rooted real deep, intimacy with him. Don't worry about what you're gonna do. If you know him as Lord, the love of God, I'll tell you what, but I'll tell you what, fruit just comes out when you're rooted. (laughs) Oh no. (laughs) So I'm looking for, go back, maturity. The Bible says very little about being comfortable. If you wanna know anything about this life, there is a cost and there are trials. You're gonna have to keep making decisions day by day. When they saw miracles in the Bible, it didn't make them mature, they still complain. A lot of people look for happiness, I'm looking for holiness. A lot of people come to me and ask for deliverance, that's easy. Change your mind, get rid of a lie. But to become a disciple, that's hard. Some people look for gifts from God. Bless me, bless me. I'm looking to bless thee, God, in this season. And so I wanna finish with this picture. Here's the, I'm doing well. Thank you, Jesus. They give me the time. Okay. See that thing there? In the generation Y, that's you guys mostly. All my sons are Gen Ys in this season. They talk about, you know, the Christian life. You know what the Christian life is? Having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, that doesn't that's not in the Bible. I want you to have a personal relationship, but don't keep it stinking private. This is not the time to be private about your little that's a generation Y thing. You know, my money, it's my money! <laughs> or at worship, I'm worshiping privately, I just worship, it's, it's my God, he's my God. Oh, shut up, he's not your God. <clears throat> <laughs> it's not private. But you know in scripture, actually defining the Christian life is not having a personal relationship, but have that. Do you know what it says in Luke 9, 23 and 24? It says, take up your cross. Oh, that sounds so good today, doesn't it? Crap. (laughs) Deny yourself. Take up your cross. And the actual words in Scripture that define the Christian life is follow me. 
Many are asking Jesus, follow me into university. Follow me with all my relationships and follow me. Do I look cool? And says, follow, come on, come on, Jesus, follow me. And when things are going well, he's in my little pocket. I'm a Christian, you know. When things are going really bad, Jesus, where are you? Ah, oh, Jesus, I, ah, Jesus. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, I love you, I need you, I need you, I need you. And when things are going well, we just stuff him back in there and Jesus become an idol. It's idolatry. See, actually, the Bible says to come follow me. And it's not even who you follow, but who's really leading you? What's leading you? What's really out there? And I'm just really excited about your generation. You're the most flexible. You're the most knowledgeable. You know so stinking much. Problem with your, my generation was pride. Arrogant slobs, a lot of us. Don't agree, just relax. <laughs> a lot of pride. You know what, the generation I find and I meet all the time, it's unbelief and fear of man. It's like all over you. And if I was the enemy, I am not, I'm not. You know what I'd do? Because you're dangerous. Your generation is dangerous. I would come along and I'd put my hands all over your little ears so you cannot hear. And so many of you are finding it difficult to hear the voice of the Lord. Because you know what? You're a threat to the enemy. You are such a threat, your generation, in this season. I just want to encourage you guys. You know, it's like this, this slide here. Why do we want to come into his glory? I don't, even want to, I don't even want the presence of God. I want God. Not just the omnipresence. He's in this place, isn't he? But the manifest presence. And you see, in his presence, it says, in his light, you see light. My job is to encourage you and lead you to, to Jesus. Oh, you're all Biola students, but I tell you what, I've got to encourage myself daily to keep walking. That's why, like the rich young ruler, I want it now. Tell me now how I can have it. You've got to walk day by day, make right decisions. And I'll tell you what, this is the day, this is the season we're in. I want to encourage you. In his presence, you will see things. This week, he's going to show you things. If there's any idol stuff in you, don't go looking at the idols. That's not your job. Your job is to follow Jesus. It's Holy Spirit's job to reveal flesh and to reveal the sin. You hearing me? Don't you go, I'm tired of people looking for sin. Mark, do you think there's any sin here? I'm not worried about sin. I don't talk about sin. I just talk about him. You fix your eyes on him. Holy Spirit's job is to reveal sin. And when he does, he brings healing. When you see sin, you get discouraged. You get real down. But when you see him and the Holy Spirit shows you, you're set free. And when you're free, and you're not perfect. I'm not here to be, I'm not perfect. I just love Jesus ridiculously. And as I've walked and talked with him, I'll tell you what, I've got to go and do something with it. If you've got a heart, you've got to share it with somebody. And you know, addictions, I see so many young people struggle with addictions. You know what it is? It's a lack of friendship and it's a lack of love. You know, don't worry about boyfriends and girlfriends in a biola too much if you're about 19 or 18, 19, 20. Just love Jesus a lot more. And just get, you know, when you have a little desire for a girl or a guy, that's cool. I always joke about this. You know, the young people say, Mark, I don't know how to deal with my sexual desire. I'm asking God to take it away. I say, oh, for goodness sake, I know people my age are asking God to bring it back. <laughs> don't worry about your sexual desire. That's normal. You will have desire for people. Don't mean you have to go out with them. Don't go out with people. Just love them as a friend. Learn to be a good friend and grow strong and follow the Lord with everything within you. I want to close because I've got to wrap up with a song of my oldest son. And his name is Luke. And he's, that means enlightened one. He's 28 years of age. And I'll tell you what, you know, when I joined YWAM when I was 32 years of age, I said to God, that's, that's one thing I wanted. My sons to have their own story. And God has been so faithful, but it's been challenging. Oh, so challenging. So he's walked through life, but this is his song. And I want to play this. And if you have been, something of Holy Spirit has spoken to you in this time in preparation as we go through these days. If he said anything to you, I want you to get up and come and stand in the front. You're not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna do anything. But I like us to make some decision. Come on, God, bring it on in this place. Bring it on. You're a big God. I can have one big vision. So let's just pray, this, this is a song from Luke Parker. I just wanna just get it going there, brother. If you wanna come and stand here, just saying, yeah, Lord. Okay. In 
I just pray as we worship in this place that I just know you're enough in this time. And I just pray each one in this place, even as they stand here, they're saying, okay, God, bring it on. I want more of you. And I know, Father, you just love these guys so much. And I pray you'd strengthen them with revelation and vision, that they would not perish, but they would be ones wherever they go, their little tents of meeting, 
Just like that fire above the Old Testament tabernacle, now the fire is above each one of these. This is the New Testament. As in the day of Pentecost, I pray you'd empower these guys to live and walk and move and just so look like you, Jesus. So look like you. So attractive. And I bless them today in Jesus' name. We hope you enjoyed this message. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Learn more at biola.edu.